So Sean, we're up here uh, first week of July. Yep. We got the drills turning. We got a full crew up here. We got the fishing lines in. You know, it's a pretty good time of year, isn't it? Absolutely. It's my favorite yeah. time of year, in fact. Yeah. You know, a couple days ago it was 40 degrees. Now it dropped down to 10 degrees this morning. So, you know, it's a good time to be out here. Bugs aren't too bad yet. Yep. So let's talk about, uh, you know, the first week of July and why that's probably one of the best times to be drilling in the Athabasca Basin, specifically in the southwest corner. Certainly. So, I mean, summer drilling, a lot of things are easier, you know. Yeah. Uh, even when it's hot, machines like to, you know, like to work. They'll, they'll get hot maybe sometimes, but it's a lot easier to deal with than minus 50. Totally. Like we were dealing with this past winter. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have problems with fuel gelling or things breaking down and not wanting to start. So, yeah. you know, and water lines too. We got yeah. some pretty long water lines on the property. So it's really nice to not have to worry about that freezing. And uh, yeah, so logistically things are nice. You know, the weather's beautiful. You get the opportunity to come out here and do a little bit of fishing to blow off some steam. So mm -hmm. yeah, and it's just gorgeous up here in green in Northern Saskatchewan. I agree. Now tell me a bit about, uh, you know, some of the guys we've hired this year. It's their first program up here. How are things, uh, how are they adapting? How are they finding it? Fantastic. I mean, Ezra and uh, Robbie and Mason that we've brought on have yeah. all been really stepping up to the plate and doing a fantastic job. I'm really impressed and, uh, and happy with all of them so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, really looking forward to, you know, what they can continue to bring to the team. So really impressed and... Uh, it's, it's really nice to have, you know, some other young, ambitious guys to help me think outside the box and, yeah. and really grow our team. No, I agree. I agree. I've really been uh, liking how they've been, uh, you know, doing their work around here, taking direction from you and uh, really showing good initiative. So I'm really happy to see that. Yep, I agree. Uh, we've got uh, our consultants from, from De Rouge as well back again for the third time. Yep. Uh, tell me about them and uh, the guys we're bringing up and the girls and, and how, they're, how they're adapting and how they're growing and getting used to our programs. Sure. So uh, a lot of the ones that uh, we have up here again this summer have been here before for the last couple seasons. Yeah. Uh, again, they're all young people. Uh, you know, Jordan Pearson, Allison Ulrich, Andrew Schumelak. Yeah. Uh, we got a new, couple new summer students, uh, one of which... Uh, He's just finishing up his studies at the University of Saskatchewan, where I went. Yep. So uh, all young, hungry people ready to learn and, you know, do a good job, really ambitious. And, uh, yeah, the DeRouge team has always been outstanding. Every season up here at Davidson River has been uh, really successful, you know, as far as people go and everything else. So it's, it's great to work with these young people and, yeah. you know, try and teach them a thing or two and, you know, Bring them, uh, bring them up and get them familiar with the best place in the world to find uranium. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Let's talk a bit about that, actually. Sure. Um, people have been asking us, you know, why are you guys exploring only in Saskatchewan? Why aren't you in the States or why aren't you in Africa? What's the, what's the main reason behind that? Well, as you know, we've touted before in a lot of our videos and I'm sure a lot of our investors and, you know, outsiders and insiders alike know the Athabasca Basin is the best place in the world to find that high-grade uranium. Yeah. So there's lots of different types of uranium deposits, you know, all over the globe. Uh, Kazakhstan, Australia, United States, yeah. for some examples. But, uh, you know, most of these are, you know, the ones that are be being mined are fairly large, but yep. they're all really low grade mm -hmm. and uh, different styles. So these Proterozoic basins like the Athabasca Basin are yep. uh, a really good spot to you know, as chemically speaking and geologically speaking to find these things. So, you know, this is our main focus because we want to make that next high grade discovery. So now speaking of those grades, yeah, give me, uh, give our investors an idea of our new investors, an idea of what those grades are like here sure. compared to, you know, different parts of Africa or United States or Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, a lot of those larger deposits that, you know, are economic because they are large. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, the grades we're looking at there are, you know, lots of times sub percent, right? So they're, yeah. you know, half a percent or something like that, maybe approaching a percent sometimes. Yep. But all, you know, usually on average, I'd say probably sub percent. Yeah. And then uh, just in comparison, you know, the Athabasca Basin is often 
a hundred times that. So we're looking at, you know, grades of, you know, five, 10, 20, all the way up to ridiculous numbers, like 60 to 80% in some, you know, in some samples that have come back, like from the yeah. arrow deposit from MacArthur river and, uh, ISO's recent one as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hurricane. And it's, you know, the arrow deposits right across the road from us. And, uh, we're looking at the same geological features on our Davidson River property. So that's, you know, outstanding right there. Yeah. And yeah, it's just uh, pretty bananas actually how, how high grade these deposits are in this part of the world. No kidding, no kidding. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about is, uh, you know, we're working right now, we're at Big Bear Camp, Grigor Lake. The, uh, this is the region of the Clearwater Dene Nation. Yep. And uh, as you know, we've got a very strong relationship with Chief Clark. And uh, this past week was actually the big election up here. Yeah. And Chief Clark uh, won again, handsomely yep. this time. Yep. So he is now going to be the chief again, guaranteed for the next four years. Yep. Which is uh, fantastic for our company and for those companies in this region that he's got good relationships with. So for sure. really happy to see that. And I hope to uh, see him in the next day or two up here and sort of uh, have a few conversations. But one of the things that's really important is a relationship we've built with Chief Clark and the Clearwater River Dene Nation is, you know, it's all built on trust. And trust is a, you know, a big part of everything we do internally as a team and, and all with our vendors too. So for sure, I'm looking forward to uh, sitting down with Chief Clark again and, and going through strategy and how we're yep. both going to be successful. And I know he's uh, really looking forward to that as well. So likewise, some of our investors can look forward to some of those videos coming up as well. Absolutely. All right, time for us to get a fish on here, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> They're not hungry right now. It's not dinner time yet. No.